Welcome to the second video in this series covering DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. In part one, I covered video editing basics, and if you haven't watched that, I recommend you do, especially if you're unfamiliar with the DaVinci Resolve workflow. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover keyframing, speed changes, reverse playback, freeze frames, and blending. Timestamps are available in the description below. None of the features I'm discussing in this tutorial require the paid upgrade to DaVinci Resolve Studio and can be completed with the free version of this app. Keyframing is a way of automating specific parameters in DaVinci Resolve. If you select a video and open up the inspector, a feature I covered in the last video, you'll see a list of parameters that can be edited for the video. Most of these options can be automated using keyframing. Let's start with zoom which is found at the top. Next to the X and Y options is a diamond shaped icon. This is how we assign a keyframe. I'm going to set up some keyframes that will zoom in on my dog and then zoom out again. I will need to start by setting up two keyframes. One where the zoom will begin and the second where it will stop. I'm going to move my playhead to the point where I want my zoom to start. I can now click the diamond shaped icon in the zoom area to set the first keyframe and the beginning of the automation. You will notice it turns red. I will now go to the part of the video where I want the zoom to complete and set my second keyframe. Once the second keyframe is in place, I can adjust the zoom of the clip. Now this is in place, I can play back my footage and see the zoom happen automatically. Zoom isn't the only function that can be automated using keyframing. In fact, if you look around the inspector, you can see the keyframe option on most of the functions here. Let's try this again, but using the crop function. I'm going to automate the crop function so it slides across the screen to create the cut. To do this, I move my playhead to where I want the crop to begin. Then I can tap on the diamond shaped keyframe icon to set the point at which the crop will begin. Move the playhead to where in the footage you want the crop action to finish, then set another keyframe. This time move the slider for the crop for how much of the image on screen you want to be cropped. Now, when you play back the footage, you can see the crop happen automatically. If you want to edit or delete a keyframe, this is done easily via the inspector. As you scroll through the timeline, you'll notice that arrows appear either side of the keyframe icon, if you've used it at any point in your project. Tap on the arrow and it will take you to the next keyframe on the sequence. You'll notice the diamond keyframe button turns red. From here, you can tap the icon to turn off the keyframe or edit the parameter for whatever you have set. Speed changes allow you to increase or decrease the speed of your footage. It's commonly used for slick slow motion effects or to help you achieve smoother footage if you have shot at a faster frame rate. Shooting video at a faster frame rate such as 50, 60 or even 120 frames per second gives you more options for playing around with speed in your editing. Most smartphones and cameras can film at different frame rates and it's worth taking the time to experiment with these when filming. The footage I'm using today has been shot at 60 frames per second. When slowing down the footage, I can slow it down by as much as 50% and it still retains smooth playback. Select some footage on your timeline, then under the inspector pane, go down to the speed change section. There are several options here, and I'll explain what each one does. The two arrows pointing to the right indicate that the footage is playing forwards and is on by default. Next to this are two arrows pointing to the left. Tapping this will reverse the footage, meaning it will play backwards. 
The last icon is a snowflake, and tapping this will split the clip and freeze the footage at wherever you have your playhead on the timeline. Next we have two sliders, both of which will adjust the speed of your footage. The top slider lets you change the speed of the footage as a percentage, for example by 25%. The second slider lets you adjust the speed by a frame rate. Both of these sliders are linked, so moving one will adjust the other. This lets you see how much you're adjusting the speed in terms of percent, as well as what the frame rate of the footage will be. Double tapping the numbers next to the sliders will let you type a number in manually. Below this are two tick boxes, which are very important to be aware of. Ripple Timeline is turned off by default, but knowing what this does is important for how DaVinci Resolve treats the footage that you are adjusting, as well as what comes after it. With Ripple Timeline turned off, the footage you are showing will take up the exact amount of time on your project. You can also see the effect of this in the duration part of the inspector. At the moment, when I adjust the speed, the clip itself still lasts for the same amount of time, but more or less of the footage is shown, depending on if you are slowing down or speeding up the video. When you enable Ripple Timeline, the duration of the footage you are changing the speed of isn't fixed. This means that all of the footage is shown, and if you slow down the footage by 50% for example, the clip will be twice as long on your timeline. The implication of this is that any footage that occurs after this clip will appear later in your timeline. The final option is for pitch correction. When you change the speed of the video, the audio speed is also changed. When audio is played back faster, the pitch of the audio is higher, and when the audio is played back slower, the pitch becomes lower. Pitch correction will keep the pitch of the audio in its original form. Bear in mind though, that slowing down footage too much and maintaining the pitch will generate quite a lot of artifacts and end up with quite a robotic sound, particularly when working with people speaking. By default, when you place a clip on top of another on the timeline, only the highest clip is visible on screen. Blending lets you combine the clips to create an overlay effect. Here we have two clips on top of each other. Select the top clip, then go to the inspector. Look for a section called Composite. Here you will find the blending options on a drop down menu, as well as a slider for the opacity. Opacity is adjusting how see through the clip is as a percentage. You'll notice there is a keyframe icon next to it, meaning this parameter can be automated, just like we discussed previously in this tutorial. Let's take a look at the drop down menu above. These give us different blending options. Having a trackpad or magic keyboard with your iPad is useful here, as hovering your cursor over each one gives you a preview of the effect. If you have an M2 iPad or above with the Apple Pencil hover feature, this will also work. Some of these effects are quite natural looking, such as multiply or overlay. Some of these give you quite extreme results, or creative results as I prefer to put it. Find the effect from this list that's right for you. So that's the end of this tutorial video for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. If you want to leave a tip, please use the super thanks button here on YouTube, or you can head over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash buzzkill to leave a tip there. PayPal, debit and credit cards and Apple Pay are all accepted. That's it for this video, thanks for watching and I'll be back soon with some more iPad tutorials.